as howling winds echo across the snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, the Quaker Oats Company, makers of Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice, the delicious cereal shot from guns, in cooperation with the Mutual Broadcasting System, present by special recording, Sergeant Preston of the Yukon. <laughs> It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, breaking the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. And King, on you, Husky! Gold, gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. And the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. Our adventure will begin in just a moment. There are lots of ways to save money. You still hear about people tucking it away under mattresses, putting it away in a favorite piggy bank or a cookie jar. But there's a much better way to save, and that's by buying United States savings bonds through the payroll savings plan. It's the real easy way of saving money. Your employer automatically sets aside a certain sum of money each payday, any amount you name. It's all done before you get your pay, so in that way you never miss it. When enough is accumulated, you receive a Series E savings bond, automatically too. There's no bookkeeping or budgeting problems for you. It's also the smart way of saving. Series E savings bonds pay back $4 for every three you put in, even more if you hold them past maturity. Yes, there are many ways of saving money. But today, while you're thinking about it, join the 8 million other Americans who find it easier to save through the automatic payroll savings plan. This message is brought to you as a public service. Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police had been summoned to the inspector's office at police headquarters in Dawson City. The sergeant listened intently as the inspector spoke. Sergeant, there have been several robberies and a murder in the vicinity of Selkirk. The constable telegraphed for help, saying that a strange bandit gang is operating in that territory, terrorizing the people but leaving no trace. I want you to take King and go down there as soon as possible. Yes, sir. I uh, notice you say strange gang. What do you mean by that, Inspector? The members of the gang wear white robes every time that they strike. Their heads are covered by white hoods. They've become known as the Ghost Riders. I see. That's interesting. How soon can you start for Selkirk? Well, in an hour, sir. King and I'll do what we can to help bring in the Ghost Riders. Goodbye, sir. Come along, King. Later in Selkirk, the constable sat in his office facing several townsmen who had come in to discuss the situation. Judd Spark spoke in a rather rasping voice. That's me. This town banker here in Selkirk, I for one demand we have more protection against the bandits known as the Ghost Riders. Right, right. Mr. Sparks, I admit that gang has me stumped. But I've sent to headquarters for help, and I'm sure in time the Ghost Riders will be caught. How many men are they sending you, Constable? One. One? one. Now, just a minute, Sparks. Let me have a word, will you? What can you say that I haven't said, Luke Coach? That's more what I don't like a common cafe owner calling me Sparks. I'm Mr. Sparks to you, sir. Have it your way, Mr. Sparks. But I say give the constable a chance to show what he can do. Two Mounties may be able to get further, and a mob of them running all over the place. Those are ordinary men in those white robes. And the Mounties sure have proved that they know how to handle law breaking men. You're right. Thanks, Luke. That is speech for the cafe owner. But all we know, that gang might even hang out in your cafe. Yes, they might have that. We have no way of knowing. But if you're insinuating... Now, no, no, take it easy. You men can't come here and act peaceful. You better not come here at all. Oh, he gets my goat, Constable. We've said about all there is to say at this gathering, men. Take my word for it. We'll do all we can to track down that gang of outlaws and put them behind bars. All right. Well, well, that evening, the Constable entered the cafe. <laughs> 
<laughs> As he walked slowly through the crowd, he looked around for Luke Coates, the proprietor. Then he spoke to one of the waiters. Say, is Luke Coates around tonight? Nope. Luke and Jake went out a while ago. Said they were going down to the opera house to see the show. I see. Thanks. As the constable stood there a moment looking over the crowd, he was startled by a commotion outside. Hey, where's the constable? Hey, constable! It's a ghost rider. They busted into the bank and they're getting away. What? Out of my way, lady. It was the following morning that Sergeant Preston and King arrived in Selkirk, went directly to the constable's office. The constable told of the various crimes committed by the outlaw gang and also told about the bank robbery the night before. Sergeant Preston listened intently and then spoke. Why didn't you pick up the trail while it was still fresh, Hank? Uh, by the time I came here and got my horse, about 20 townsmen were already after the gang. And others were pouring out of the cafe and the opera house to join them. You mean they covered the trail? That's right, Sergeant. Mm. The gang headed through a heavily wooded area, then seemingly circled back in a town where the trail was lost. They must have taken off their hoods and robes as they rode through the woods. They must have a clever leader who figured all that in advance. Yeah, I thought of that. Some of the townsmen met here yesterday to discuss the situation. Banker Judge Sparks practically accused the cafe owner, of Luke Coates, not only of harboring the gang, but of being one of them, if not the leader. Do you think there's anything to Sparks' suspicions? Well, Luke got sore and walked out with one of his men, a fellow named Jake Drew. Huh? And last night, Sparks' bank was robbed. I happen to know neither Luke or Jake were at the cafe when it happened. Did you have a talk with them afterward? Yes. They both swear they went to the opera house, but no one remembers seeing them there. Well, that means they might have been a ghost writer. Sure. But still, they might have really been at the opera house. I'd need a lot more than just the lack of an alibi to accuse them. There were a lot of men at the show who probably couldn't prove it. Mm, of course, you're right. But Luke Coates and that fellow Jake might bear close watching, Hank. I agree, Sergeant. Uh-oh. Here comes Banker Sparks heading this way. I can see him through the window. Good. Let him come in. It's about time we became better acquainted. I'm afraid you'll hear a lot of yapping about the incompetence of the mounted police. Oh. Thank you. It's an average. My bank was robbed right after I have a run-in with that, that no-good Luke coach. And you sit here with him. Uh, well, well, it's Sergeant Preston and his dog. Good morning, Mr. Sparks. So this is the other matter you were expecting. Why didn't you say so, Constable? I didn't think it was necessary. Of course, if you'd been on your toes last night, perhaps you'd have caught those outlaws red-handed. That no matter... I'm sure the sergeant and his famous dog will be of great help in tracking down the ghost riders. That's what we hope to do, don't we, King? <laughs> I hope you realize, Mr. Sparks, that the citizens of this town hamper investigation of crimes by rushing to the scene and trying to act in place of the police. Please, Andre, I never thought of that. But after all, I suppose there's no way to control what they do in that respect. That's right, there isn't. Frankly, my bank took a great loss last night. Close to $20,000. And if you'd pay more attention, Constable, to the actions of Luke Coates, maybe you'd soon solve these crimes. Careful, Mr. Sparks. Making accusations can get you into trouble. I'm not accusing him. But I have a right to state my opinion. Maybe, but it isn't wise to cast suspicion upon another person without proof. If Luke is mixed up in this affair, we'll find out before long. But if the ghostwriters manage to circle back and lose themselves in the crowd each time... How do you expect to trail them? They may be able to cover their trail from the police by that method, Mr. Sparks. But a well-trained dog like King won't be confused by it. He'll still be able to pick out their scents. Well, he said a fact. Yeah, he didn't know that before. Didn't you? Hank, if you don't mind, I'm going to the cafe and eat, and then we'll make what plans we can toward finding the ghost riders. Let's go, King. I'll see you again, Mr. Sparks. <laughs> Judd Sparks followed Sergeant Preston and King out of the constable's office. The banker stood a moment watching the Mountie and Dog as they walked toward the cafe, and then he hurried to the bank. That noon, Judd, as usual, took the place of one of the tellers when the man went to lunch. By the time the bank was ready to close, four men who at various times during the afternoon had sauntered back to Judd's office unobserved were sitting across from Judd's desk as he spoke. <laughs> My uh, plan to have one of you stroll in every noon while I'm at the teller's window works out fine. It's a good way to tip you off when I want to meet with you. Sure is. Uh, what do you want to see us for this afternoon, Judge? Yes, this, Joe. The body who was sent here to help the constable, 
He's charging pressing. Hey, he's dynamite. Yeah, we'll have to be careful. That's right. We'll have to be very careful. He has that famous dog of his with him. Uh, who's afraid of a dog? Wes, something Preston said drew my attention. Yeah? What? He said a well-trained dog like his won't be fooled if uh, a trail is covered by the tracks of many others. The uh, dog still follows the scent. Well, I know something about dogs, Judd. You'd have to get that dog to the scene to pick up the scent before the others got there. Of course, if Preston does get him there when we pull our next job, it might be bad for us. Hey, Judd, didn't you say you got them suspecting Luke Coates and his friend Jake Drew? Yes, they don't admit it, but I'm sure those two muddies will be watching Luke and Jake. Do you still intend to grab the mine payroll at the express office tomorrow night? Of course. You all have your robes and hoods in your saddlebags. We'll meet in the grove behind the express office at 8 o'clock. Put on the ropes, then we'll move in and take that payroll. Yeah, but what about Preston and the dog? I've thought of that, man. But somehow we uh, have to lay our plans in such a way that by tomorrow night, Sergeant Preston's dog, King, will be uh, missing for good. We'll continue our adventure in just a moment. <laughs> Say, have you had the thrill lately of being right there in the ballpark when the leadoff man steps up to the plate? Have you been there to see the star players in person? See the wallop home runs? See the exciting double plays? Well, don't miss the fun another day. Come out to the ball game as guest of a major or minor league team. Walk right through the gate free if you are 12 years or younger and bring mom or dad or another paying adult. Yes, you can get a free baseball ticket. No mailing, no waiting. It's right inside a package of Quaker Puff wheat or Quaker Puff rice or Muffet shredded wheat. Or buy Quaker Paco 10 and get two free baseball tickets. Names of teams and dates are on every ticket. Hurry to get your free baseball ticket in the special package of Quaker Puff Wheat or Rice, Muffet Shredded Wheat, or Quaker Pack O' Ten. Now to continue. The following afternoon, Judd Sparks made it a point to intercept Sergeant Preston and King as they walked along the main street. Well, King, okay, we'll go back near the cafe for a while. Okay, Sergeant. What? Sergeant Preston. Oh, Judd Sparks. wonder what he wants. Hey, Sergeant. I saw you passing across the street from the bank, so I hurried to speak to you. How are you, Mr. Sparks? What's happened? Well, nothing's happened. I, uh, I want to ask you if you'd take supper at my place with me tonight. Why, uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Sparks, but since I'm here to investigate oh, a Sergeant, crime... there are several important points I want to discuss when we both have more time. Not to mention a particular note I received in regard to the bank robbery. No? Where is it? At home. At, uh, First, I decided to overlook it, but on second... Time, I'll uh, accept your invitation to supper, Mr. Spice. Hey, fine, fine. We'll eat at seven. My police is not far from the constable's cabin where you're stopping. I'll be there a little before seven. Hey, fine, fine. Oh, uh, by the way... Huh? My, uh, my new housekeeper, she's afraid of dogs. Oh. Uh, perhaps you could leave your dog at the cabin. The constable can come for you if anything occurs, and you can... Quickly get to the cabin for the dog. Well, the constable will be going to the cafe for supper about that time, so I'll leave King at the cabin, as you suggest. You don't mind, eh, fellow? <laughs> yeah, it would, it would be, of course. It, if it weren't for the housekeeper, I wouldn't mind having King come along with you. Eh? I understand. Uh, well, I'll see you at my place in the supper time, huh? Goodbye until then, Sergeant. Goodbye. That evening, after locking King in the cabin, Sergeant Preston went to Judd Sparks' house. Oh, Sergeant, come in. Uh, just make yourself at home, Sergeant. Thanks. I'm interested in what you have to tell me and in that note you spoke of. Oh, yes, yes, of course. Oh, uh, Sergeant, this is my new housekeeper, Mrs. Guffey. Why? Well, now, bless my heart, if it isn't Sergeant Preston himself. Mrs. Guffey, how are you? I wondered where you went when you left Dawson. Sure, and I came down here two months ago to run a boarding house. Then Mr. Sparks asked me to take care of his place, so here I am. <laughs> oh, glory be, it's good to see you. And tell me, how is King, bless his heart? King's fine. And why didn't you bring him with you, I'd like to know. Well, you uh, see, I, uh, I had the impression.
impression you didn't like dogs, Mrs. Guffey, so I asked the sergeant not to bring King with him. Oh, and for the life of me, I can't figure out how you got such an impression, sir. Well, <clears throat> come to think of it, uh, neither do I. But uh, if Sergeant Preston wants us to hold the supper while he goes back after King... No uh, need of that, Mr. Sparks, I... Have to leave as soon as we eat, anyway. Well, then I'll hustle the victuals on the table so as not to keep you waiting, sir. Right. Now, Sergeant, about that note, eh? Oh, yes. Yeah, here it is. Now, look. It's printed on the stationery that's used at the hotel. The hotel connected with Luke Coach Cafe. Anyone could have access to that paper. Let's see. Mr. Sparks, we're not through with you yet. Maybe we'll get you along with more of your bank's money next time. The ghost writers. Yeah. This note's very interesting. You nervous about the threat it contains? No, I am not. I feel sure the Luke Coach is behind it. Now, notice the way mystery is underlined. Well? When we argued in the constable's office, I told him to call me Mr. Sparks, and he did, stressing the word Mr. You seem determined to connect Coates with that guy. It's evident to me that he is connected, even if you don't see it my way at the moment. Well, now, supper's on the table, sir. You'd better come while it's hot. Uh, yes, yes, of course. Well, come along, Sergeant Brady. Meantime, after watching the constable enter the cafe for supper, two of Judd's henchmen, Joe and Wes, went to the Mounties' cabin where King was waiting and approached the side window. I'll take a look inside and try to see the dog. There you see him. He's barking. It's kind of dim in there. I'll tap on the window to attract his attention. Get your gun ready. Yeah, all right. I'm ready. Oh, now I see him. Look, just inside the window. Let him have a bullet, quick. He's jumping around in there. I'll try a shot. That did it. I saw him drop down below the window. Let's duck up the back way, then we'll join the crowd that'll gather here in a few minutes. Come on, let's get going. After a quick supper, Sergeant Preston made his excuses and left Judd Sparks' house, heading for the cabin to get King. As he went up the street, he met the constable who had just come out of the cafe. Hello, Hank. Just on my way to the cabin. So am I, and we'd better hurry. Huh? I just heard there was shooting near our cabin. Come on. Look, a crowd milling around the place. Now, what's happened here? We heard a shot over here. Yeah, it looks like someone shot through the window. Let's get inside quick. Right. I don't know. King's not barking. Something's wrong. There he is, under the window. King. King boy. Huh. Bullet creased the top of his head. He's been stunned. He's coming to now. Oh, for a minute I was afraid he was dead. I don't get this, Sergeant. I wonder who'd attempt to kill King. He must have been watching us closely to know you'd left him alone here. Something's beginning to click in my mind, Hank. Oh, uh, bring a pan of water and a cloth, will you? Sure, right away. You'll be all right, boy. If those people hadn't milled around out there, we'd soon find out who did this. Here's the water and a cloth, Sergeant. Oh, thanks. You'll be all right. He's getting up now. This will take away the sting, boy. There. Feeling better, King? <laughs> no, Hank, we're going to ask some questions. Something's happening up the street. Come on. Hurrying from the cabin with King, once again himself at their side, Preston and the constable ran up the main street to the express office, where a crowd was already collecting. Hey, the robbery express office. Got out the back way. They were the ghost drivers. Sergeant, we better get our horses. We won't need our horses. I have a fairly clear picture in my mind of the man behind us. But who? Come on, I'll tell you later. Right. Where are we going? We'll head for the grove of trees behind the bank and hide in the brush there. But I don't get it. You will. Let's hurry. Come on, gang. <laughs> We'll continue our adventure in just a moment. You should have been at the ball game today. I saw three home runs. And guess what? I got one of the home run balls. Fellas and girls, why don't you get a free baseball ticket? It's easy. Come out to the ball game as guest of a major or minor league team. Your free ticket is waiting for you right now inside packages of Quaker Pop Wheat, Quaker Pop Rice, Muffet Shredded Wheat, and Quaker Paco 10, which has two free baseball tickets. Yes, if you are 12 years or younger, just bring mom or dad or another paying adult and see wonderful major or minor league baseball games free. Names of teams and dates are on every ticket. Get as many free tickets as you want. No mailing, no waiting. When mom buys breakfast cereal, just be sure she gets the kind with a free baseball ticket inside. That's Quaker Pop wheat and rice and Muffet shredded wheat. You get two free baseball tickets inside Quaker Paco 10. 
So don't miss out another day. See the star players wallop those home runs. Now to continue. A short time later, the two Maudies and the dog were hidden in the tall brush back in the grove. To follow their usual plan, they'll circle back to town, so I expect they'll soon be here. You mean the ghost riders, huh? Yes, I expect they'll come to this grove one at a time after they mix with the crowd. What's the angle? Judge Sparks invited me to supper. He suggested I leave King at the cabin, saying his housekeeper didn't like dogs. Well? She turned out to be a woman I knew in Dawson, a Mrs. Guffey, who definitely does like dogs. She said she never gave Sparks any such idea. But maybe he really did think... That isn't all. He's tried in every way to get us to suspect Lou Coates. He tried too hard, it seemed to me. I know. When I came to your office yesterday, he said if the ghost riders managed to circle back and lose themselves in the crowd each time, how do we expect to And you think Judd is with that guy? Yes, I do. But we'll soon find out for sure. Quiet, King. Someone coming. What? As the two Mounties and the dog watched from their hiding place, a man rode into the grove and stopped. He dismounted and went to the back door of the bank, which opened into Judd's office. That isn't Judd Sparks. No, but look. He let himself into the key. Uh, but how can we get proof? Quiet. Here comes another one. That's Judd Sparks. Once more, the two men and King watched quietly as Judd went into the back door. Then the constable became impatient. What are we going to do to find Wait him? until the rest get here, then we'll act. I'm sure now we're watching a gathering of the ghost riders in Spike's office. The Mounties waited until three more had left their horses in the grove and entered the back door. Then the constable spoke. From all reports, there were five in the gang, Sergeant. That means they're all in there. Hank, I figure they haven't had time to get rid of their robes and hoods. That means they discarded them as they rode and put them in the saddlebags. Now we'll do some searching. Come on. Right. Quickly, the two Mounties went from horse to horse, finding in the saddlebags of each the white robes and hoods used by the gang. Then Preston spoke. <laughs> the ghost riders are gathered in Judge Spike's office. They're five against two, and desperate killers. Get Coates and a few of his men, bring them here, Hank, and we'll move in on that gang. Right. Within a short time, the constable returned with Luke and the others. Without going into details, Preston told them he was sure the ghost riders were in the bank and told of a plan to capture them. Meantime, inside Judd's office, Judd and his men were having a discussion. Judd, I say, divvy the payroll money right now. Uh, sure. Yeah. Well, that's all right. Yeah. We'll divide it now. I put the check of bills on the desk here, Wes. With pleasure. Uh, with... Hey. What's that? Somebody's at the front door. I'll open the office door into the bank. Put that money check in the door on my desk. All right. It's Sergeant Preston. I'll try to get rid of him. Close his door. And if he starts coming back here, get out the back door fast. Yeah, you get rid of him. Mr. Clark, I must see you a minute. Just a minute. Well, Sergeant Preston, what can I do for you? Let's step back to your office. I have a few things to say that will be of interest. Uh, <clears throat> why not just sit here and talk my... Desk is cluttered with private papers. I don't need a desk, Mr. Sparks. I just want to say a few words to you where people passing by won't see us. Come on, we'll go back to your office. Meantime, inside the office, the others waited tensely. They heard the conversation between Judd and Sergeant Preston out front. When they heard steps coming toward the office, Joe exclaimed, Holy smoke, it's Preston, and he's coming back here to the office. So what are we going to do now? We've got to get out of here quick. Come on, head out the back door. Right. Come on. Reach sure. on The constable and the posse. We're well, tricked. Don't give up. Shoot it out with him. When Sergeant Preston and Judd Sparks opened the office door to enter, the commotion started just outside the open back door, through which the other crooks had gone. What is it? What's that mob doing outside the back door? The game's up, Sparks. Oh, no. I'll pick you. As Judd grabbed Preston and struggled with him, Joe, one of the crooks, turned and ran back into the office, aiming his gun at the Mountie. Don't let him take me, Mountie. But the great dog king, just outside the door, saw the danger to his master, and with a growl of anger, leaped at Joe's gun arm. Oh, take him off, me. This will calm you down, Sparks. Oh, oh, king. Down, boy. We got them all, Sergeant. Good. I'll have a look in this desk. Ah, uh, look. 
A sack of payroll money from the express office. Gosh, imagine Sparks being with the gang. Yeah, he sure had us all fooled. Yeah, look here. You, you can't prove Sparks anything. Sparks with that money sack stenciled with the express company name, not to mention the robes and hoods we found, we have proof enough. Yeah, wait a minute. Hey, listen to me. We arrest you and your gang in the name of the Crown for robbery and murder. That, that dog, I, I thought he was dead. Oh, you did? So King picked out the very man who tried to kill him, eh? If you had killed him, my friend, I wouldn't be responsible for what I'd do to you. By thunder, Sergeant, it didn't take long for you and King to catch up with the Ghost Riders. They'll really be Ghost Riders after the law finishes with them, Hank. Well, let's get them to jail. This case is closed. We'll return in just a moment with a word about our next exciting adventure. Your musical treat of the day waits for you throughout the week on Mutual. Each Tuesday and Thursday evening, it's time for Eddie Fisher and a session of music as everyone likes it. Young and old delight in Eddie Fisher's way with a song. And he's joined on every show by Fred Robbins as MC, Alex Stordahl's orchestra, and outstanding guest stars. Every Saturday, the teenager's favorite, Johnny Desmond, brings phonorama time and a roundup of the newest and best in popular recordings. On Sundays, the Enchanted Hour presents favorite music from the world's best-loved composers. Every weekday also means time for Hawaii calls and authentic melodies of the islands. Music fills Mutual's air throughout the week. Hear the Eddie Fisher Show, Johnny Desmond with Phonorama Time, Enchanted Hour, and Hawaii Calls on Mutual throughout the week over most of these stations. And now, here is Sergeant Preston. Sergeant Preston reporting, sir. Sergeant, I've just been talking with the miner from Gold Haven. There's a dangerous situation there. Oh, huh? What's that, sir? The trail has been so bad that it's been impossible to ship any gold out. It's piling up in the express office. I see, sir. What's more, a number of questionable characters have been drifting into town. It's bound to be trouble. I want you to get to Gold Haven as fast as you can. Yes, sir. But the trail to Gold Haven is ankle deep in mud, and rushing torrents must be crossed. The sergeant faces danger every foot of the way, and at the end of the trail, a band of ruthless killers greedy for gold. Don't miss this next exciting adventure. These Sergeant Preston of the Yukon Adventures are brought to you every Monday through Friday at this time by the Quaker Oats Company, makers of Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice, the delicious cereals shot from guns. By special recording in cooperation with the Mutual Broadcasting System. They are a copyrighted feature of Sergeant Preston of the Yukon Incorporated. Created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated, and directed by Fred Flowerday. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice. So long. This is Mutual, radio network for all America. America.